Hi, and welcome to Karen's Kitchen Easy. Together with our kitchen basics, tips, and tricks, we're going to make you the star of your kitchen. If you enjoy this video, be sure to check out my YouTube channel and look at the link below this video. It will take you to karenskitcheneasy.com where you can find a printable version of today's recipe. And just remember, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. But wait, it is easy and you can do it too. Today's easy recipe is called cuscinetti, which is Italian jam pillows or jam pockets. And again, it's a very easy recipe that's actually a little type of fried ravioli that are served for dessert. And as you can see, once again, we have very few ingredients. So this is a very easy one to put together that's going to impress your friends. We're gonna start with some semi-sweet chocolate morsels. Don't use milk chocolate because you have enough sweetness. Also some pine nuts, but again, you can substitute another type of mild nut, such as almonds. And also for this recipe, we're going to use cherry jam. Now, cherry jam I simply like because it goes well with the chocolate, but you can substitute another type of jam if you like, but cherries and chocolate go well together. Traditionally, they also use grape jam or sometimes apricot jam. And then we're going to use, as our dough, we're going to actually take a little bit of a shortcut here. And instead of rolling out our own dough, we're going to use some dough that you can buy in the grocery store, usually in the produce department, that are usually for wontons. And they're simply called wonton wrappers. And they're very thin type of dough that's just going to make our job a little bit easier. Also some corn oil and some egg wash, which is simply eggs and a little bit of water that are whipped up together and then you'll see why we need this in a little bit. Now we're going to do a little method of cooking called oven frying. And to do this, we're going to start with an oven proof container. You know I like to use the glass or Pyrex pie pans and some oil. And we're going to start by actually preheating our oven to about 400 degrees and pouring a layer of oil into our oven proof pie pan. I'm using about a a third to a half a cup of oil right here. We're going to actually put this in the oven and get it hot. And that is crucial before we start. We want a hot pan with hot oil. And believe it or not, if you keep your oil warm enough, the oil's not going to soak into your dessert and make it very greasy tasting. So into the oven this goes at 400 degrees. Now we're going to start our mixture. And I've got this wonderful little some people call it a slap chopper, but it's just a vegetable chopper. It's very handy to have around the kitchen. And we're going to chop our ingredients up. Now let's start with the pine nuts here. I'm just going to pour a little pile of them out and try to fit as many as you can under your chopper. And just slam away with it. Now, once again, you can use a food processor on this, but you have to be careful about how long you chop because you don't want to either pulverize your nuts or melt your chocolate, which is very possible to do in a food processor. But we want to chop our ingredients up a little bit because we don't want them poking holes in our, in our uh, wrapper. So we had a few nuts that didn't quite get chopped all the way, so... Once again, under the chopper, they go. I'm just gonna put them in a bowl. And the next thing we're going to do actually is chop up our chocolate morsels a little bit because they're a little bit too big the way they are, although you can buy miniature chocolate morsels. And if you can find those in the store, you won't need to chop them up. But again, we're putting a little pile here and fitting them under our chopper as much as we can get anyway and just slam away. And this is great exercise. It's a lot of fun. Just chop, chop, chop. And then you can put them in the, well, let's do it a little bit longer here. There, that's better. Okay, then we'll just pile them in the bowl. And we're going to keep doing this for the rest of our chocolate morsels. Now this may seem like an odd combination of flavors, and the chocolate is what's going to come out the most. But we have this wonderful fruit component from the jam and you know fruit and chocolate go so well together and then we have our pine nuts for a little bit of crunch and it just makes a wonderful filling 
But here we are chopping up the last little bit of our chocolate morsels and into the bowl it's going to go. And then we're going to add our cherry jam. And that's also going to create a kind of a binder for it. So we've just got about a third of a cup here of our cherry jam. And by the way, we have about a cup of the chocolate and about a third of a cup of the pine nuts here. So that'll give you kind of an idea of the proportions that we have. But that's all the three ingredients we need for our filling. That is it. So we're just going to stir things up a little bit. And make sure that all our chocolate and our pine nuts are nicely moistened. And then we're just going to set it aside. And now for the fun part. We're going to take our wonton wrappers, which usually come square. If you find round ones, you've already got one little step done for you, but usually you find square ones. But because they're pillows, and pillows are usually round, we're going to cut these into three inch circles. So I'm using a three inch cookie or biscuit cutter here. And there we go, we've got a little three inch round here. And then we're going to take a spoon and spoon just a little bit of the filling into our wonton wrapper. And a, uh, an error that a lot of people make is trying to cram too much filling into each one. But just about a teaspoonful is all you want and set it a little bit off center. And then this is where our egg wash comes into play. Take your finger and moisten it in the egg wash. Again, it's just the eggs and water mixed in together. About a tablespoon of water to an egg. And then run your finger around the edge of your wonton wrapper. And this is going to seal the edge because we don't want any of that goodness getting out when we oven fry. Fold it in half so we have a ha kind of a half moon. And then pinch, very carefully pinch the edges together. Now, as you pinch together, you're going to want to squeeze a little bit because you want to get as much of the air out as possible. Because once it starts frying, the air is going to puff up and there's a possibility that it could break the seal when you have all that big pop, puff of air inside. So there we have it, a little half moon. And so we keep working this. We cut a three inch circle. We put some filling inside. And there's actually an Italian term for this shape of a little ravioli here. It's called a demi luna, which means half moon, which is, you know, what they look like. So we moisten the edge with our egg, fold it over. And as you can see, by placing the filling kind of off center, it helps in the folding. And so we kind of push everything together, pinch the edges. And if you see you have a little bit, little hole in it somewhere, just take some of the egg wash and it'll dab a little bit over the hole and that will help seal it. So we're going to keep on working. And now we have our hot oil out of the oven. And be careful because the glass is going to be hot, the oil is hot. And we're going to place our little raviolis in the hot oil. And as we do that, you're going to be able to see the oil start to sizzle a little bit because it's almost like putting it into a fry pan on top of the stove. Then we're going to turn it over to make sure there's oil on the top as well as the bottom. So put it in and there it is already starting to sizzle. And we're just going to fill our pan up with the raviolis. And again, it doesn't have to be a glass pan. It can be a metal pan or something. I simply like glass because A, it holds its heat very well. And B, it's easy to clean and keep clean. So we put them in and we turn them to make sure. And the reason we make sure we, there's oil on top is we don't want them to dry out. Now they're going to go in the oven here for just about two minutes. That's all it takes. So back in the oven at 400 degrees for two minutes. And then we're going to take them out and turn them over. So into the oven. Now there we are, they've been in for two minutes and here we are turning them over and you can see they're already getting kind of a lovely little golden brown on the outside. So sometimes it's hard to get a hold of the little guys there. We're turning them over with our tongs. Back in the oven now for another two minutes. 
And there we're, they're out and on our rack cooling. And you can see what a lovely color they are. And we're just going to put a few, because a few goes a long way. This is a very rich dessert on our plate. And this is a traditional way to serve them. I have four on a plate here. And we're just going to take some honey and drizzle a little bit of honey on top. And this gives, gives a little bit extra sweetness here. You can also serve it with a little ice cream, but again, a little bit of honey on the top. You can also sprinkle them with a little cocoa or powdered sugar. But there we have it, a very traditional dessert. And just remember, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. But wait, it is easy, and you can do it too. So I'll see you next time on Karen's Kitchen Easy.